want to tell you all thanks for tuning in to Just Love to Dark. I'm your host, Calvin, and this is Season 9 of Just Love to Dark. Those familiar with the show know that it's normally just streamed on at Jasla Info on Instagram and Jamaica Aid Support for Life on Facebook. But for this season, Season 9, we'll be right here on The Bridge 99 FM every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. I also have here with me my co-host, Shade. Hey. How are you, Shade? All is well. How are you? Good night, everyone. Good night, viewers and listeners. My name is Shade Buckridge, your co-host for Jasla After Dark. All right, so let's get into it. So since yesterday was Valentine's Day, uh, we know a lot of things went down. We want to know who got flowers and chocolates, who went on a date, who had some late night fun, whatever it is, we want to know about it. We want to hear about it. You see, that's the positive side to it, you know. You know a lot of people True. are like heartbroken. They never got any flowers. <laughs> Not even a text message. So that's why tonight we're going to discuss love stories. Is, is Valentine's Day a trap? Now, we also have four great guests lined up in studio tonight. The beautiful actress, Belinda. Hi, guys. Good night. Good night. I'm so happy to be here. We also have the social media influencer and comedian. Where is she? Yeah, man. Good night. Good night. We also have the dapper doctor who kept us informed and entertained during the pandemic. Dr. Philip Coombs. Greetings, greetings, greetings. So they're going to be here throughout the night to talk to us. We also have with us Roy Roberts, who is a representative from the Ministry of Health and Wellness Teen Hub, which is an adolescent-friendly safe space to bring awareness and increase knowledge about sexual and reproductive health issues, mental health, and other youth-related issues. Blessings, blessings. So they're going to be here for the entire night while we discuss the topic, love stories, is Valentine's Day a trap? But before we get to that, it's time for Hot Pot. I'm hungry. I'm going to want something juicy to eat. I we in the pot? It's time for Hot Pot. Hot Pot. Hot Pot. Hot Pot. No, sir. This catch in All right, so there, there are always some topics that are interesting and somewhat controversial. So each week, we're going to dip into our hot pot for a topic to discuss. So, Melinda, dip in the pot and tell me what's cooking. Gotcha. Mm. Hot pot. <laughs> yeah, read it into the mic for us. Tell us. So read it into the mic. Uh, what is that say? Yeah. You want me to read it for you? Let me read it for you. If sex... Okay. What is it? Is, is sex, sex a requirement or Valentine's Day? What? Is sex on, a requirement on, on Valentine's Day? Is sex a requirement on Valentine's mm -hmm. Day? Yes. So Ooh. that's what we want to talk about. So let's talk about it. You know, is sex a requirement on Valentine's Day? What are your thoughts on that, my lovely guests? Doc. <laughs> Alright, you're in the hot seat tonight, so tell us. I mean, I think every couple is different. I don't think that um, there is any hard and fast to having sex um, on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is all about love. Um, somebody should feel definitely appreciated. Um, men, it's a day that we should really step up. Um, so, yeah, I think it's something that we should use that day to really show our affection to ladies. So that's what I have to say about it. I don't know. <laughs> so sex is a requirement. I never say it's a requirement. No. But, 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 but yeah, answer to show the affection, yes, yes, that is. So yes is your answer. Sure. All right. Good, Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> is sex a requirement on Valentine's Day? No. Okay. And why? Why is that? It shouldn't be. It, I mean, it can be a part of, but not the main thing. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes on Valentine's Days, you have couples who really come together to know each other well yes you understand so um it's not really a requirement in my opinion all right so where is she what about you tell me what you think all right as uh, miss belinda said um in terms of like the belinda. older age group <laughs> in terms of the older age group i don't really want to require them because you know yeah. them being together for a time are they are more mature individuals you don't want to know about the older age group <laughs> you want to know what you think about <laughs> you know? yeah but well, my age group yeah. No, no, oh, no. For yourself, talk Overall. for yourself. Yeah. Oh, for myself? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah, man, I want a requirement, man. I know we're young, so all of them things there, you know, I play as a little young, you know? So it's a requirement. 
<laughs> All right, we know yesterday was Valentine's Day, so we still dig up in your business since mm-hmm. you say it's a requirement. Who would you hear from us yet? Rory. Rory. Well, the question kind of vague. Is it a requirement if you're single? <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. Oh, well, wow. Good wow. question. But, but it was intended in the context of All right. relationship. Um, I wouldn't say it's a requirement, but eventually it's a um, Not a requirement, no. but eventually. In another day? Are <laughs> they are night. Whichever day, night, early morning. Not necessarily All right. So, for me, I wouldn't say it's a requirement, right? I feel like if you believe, if you celebrate Valentine's Day, if it's something you're into, I think it's all about love and all that. And yes, people are gonna say that you know, sex is you know that highest point, that culmination, that greatest show of love. If you if you are in, intimate with your partner, but personally, I don't believe it's. It's a requirement on Valentine's Day. If you, if you find other ways to express your love and you do all that and it leads to the sex, then great. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I wouldn't say it's a requirement. <laughs> um, for me, different individuals, a different mm-hmm. perspective and experiences. Me need sex on Valentine's Day more than ever. So, so probably I go find a different position, find something, do something different. Valentine's Day is about love. Mm-hmm. Every day is about love. I show appreciation, but on Valentine's Day, I think that's the day you're supposed to go extra, go the extra mile for me on that day. Mm-hmm. Romance me and give me something different. You know, normally give me foreplay throughout the year. Give me foreplay or do something different on 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 that day. Uh, is a requirement for me. So for me it. today, it is a requirement. You got it I, yesterday. I need my. I don't want to talk my business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've heard their views. So the persons watching us on Instagram, just you can let us know in the comments what you think. And the listeners on the radio, send us a WhatsApp message at 876 551 5782. That's 876 551 5782. If you to share your views and if you think that, you know, sex is a requirement on Valentine's Day or it's not for you, we want to know. So for those who are just joining us, it's Just Love to Dark, brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. Jamaica Aid Support for Life offers free HIV and syphilis testing, free HIV treatment. Free pre-exposure prophylaxis to for HIV prevention, free HIV-related legal services. So we do a lot of work um, in, in it. We do a lot of work in HIV response, and this show is where we get to discuss safer sex information. We are partnering this week with the National Family Planning Board, and we are happy that we are having this episode. We're happy we're back for season nine of Just Love to Dark. So, yeah, how do you guys feel to be here tonight? Oh, I'm feeling happy to be here. We're just so ready if we talk people. about the whole sex at Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's so why I'm here, you know? <laughs> Rory says he's happy to talk about sex. All right, so we're, we're going to go for a break shortly, mm-hmm. so we'll be right back here for Jassel After Dark. Yes. All right, so we are back for Jassel After Dark. Welcome back if you're just joining us. Jassel yes. After Dark brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. So we have in the studio tonight with us Belinda Weishir, Dr. Philip Cobes, Philip Cobes, and Rory. And they will be a part of our discussion on love stories. Is Valentine's Day a trap? So let's get into it, okay? So my first question to all my guests is, do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Who want to go first? Let the lady go first. Belinda? No. You I, don't? I don't not, um, it's not deliberate. It's just that for, for years, I've always been working on a Valentine's Day, so I never really get the opportunity to, I never really get the opportunity to like, you know, um, celebrate it. But it's not something that I dig like that because of not celebrating it for so many years. But me like the festivity. And Doc, how about you? I do. I definitely do. Um, I'm happily married, so <laughs> I make sure to take care of my wife when I get the chance. Okay, yeah, nice. This is nice. a Valentine's poster yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and Rory, how yeah. about you? Most most definitely, I do celebrate Valentine's. Not like Belinda, so yeah. you know. What How do, do you celebrate Valentine's? I mean, I treat, uh, ensure that my woman feels special. Okay. You know? I'll take her on a date, you know, mm-hmm. etc. And then, you know, me tell her my thing. I'll lead up to something. <laughs> okay, yeah, F- fair enough. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Wisher? Wisher? All right. To be honest, me. Half and half. I, I celebrate the half year. Cause I mean, really, cause you know Jamaicans, most Jamaican man. 
they not celebrated because at that type of day they are where Valentine's really mean. But mm. me celebrated by watching the couples them and, and see who I get born and <laughs> you know all of them like thing. So uh, that's how me celebrate. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So, so Doc, yeah. you, you, you spoke yeah, about being happily married and everything. Do you think Valentine's is a lovers only day? Um, no, I don't think it's lovers only. Um, I think it's also for persons who, you know, have an interest in somebody else. It doesn't have to be necessarily a, a relationship that right. you're in. It can be just a day that you can show love, genuine love to somebody that you, you like. You know, maybe a friend or okay. just somebody, a family member mm-hmm. or somebody that you're interested in. You know what I mean? So I think it's just a, a, a good day, a good day that love can just be spread all over the place. And I think it's good. Yesterday, the traffic was ridiculous, by the way. I, I need to oh, sh- throw that in there crazy. because I don't understand it. I mean, it's just, anyway. Yeah. All right. So you're, so you're saying, you know, it's good for, for if you show your love to somebody. If, if your co-worker, if your wife's co-worker, you don't want to show their love for her and they give her a, a, a gift for Valentine's mm-hmm. Day, how you feel about that? You know, I feel good about that, you know. Right. I feel good that she's admired at work. Okay. You oh. know? <laughs> yeah, I mean a rose is fine. I mean, if you're talking about other big gifts, then uh, maybe no, no, not. No. <laughs> I feel <pure> bridges. <laughs> no man, but whatever she gets, I have to make sure that I go the extra mile. That I'm, I'm at the top. You know what I mean? So okay. she get one rose, may I give her twelve? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Okay. What, what about you, Rory? I think it's a lovers only day. Um, not necessarily, but. What I don't want is for persons to pressure themselves to create that image. And I see a lot of people do that. You know, you, pr- you may not have a partner or you might know so the man really like you or the girl really like you, but you're forced to yourself for that day. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you just say, you, say you, you have to make a statement. Yeah. So I don't want people to feel pressured to um, create this whole facade of what it is. But for me, it is for love. I love us day. It's all about love. And it's not necessarily intimate love. But family love, you know, what? your friend. It's not necessarily what? Intimate, as in, <laughs> as in, as in, yeah. Yeah. sex, yeah. sex yeah. or man or woman, whatever. Okay, but, okay. Yeah. But right. love, as in family, are friends, friends okay. co-workers, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, good. You, well, I want to get in your business. What was your gift yesterday for Valentine's Day? Work. <laughs> you didn't get a gift? For Valentine's Day yesterday, I, I did, speaking I, your mic, baby. Well, actually, I, I I never wanted him to spend any money. To, he was gonna do. That. I said no, don't bother doing. Okay, want well, to save the money and do he something else. Ah, that's me. okay. Something wrong with me, but that's okay. Me. I never, I never, I wasn't in the mood anyway. Oh, nice, yes, fellas. Me. How about you? What was Where your she? gift? Where she? My gift yesterday was argument. <laughs> Mighty. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> loan cussing through the day and just like a good man in text and I eat that. All yeah. right, as Valentine's Day got done, I didn't tell we good again. Oh. <laughs> convenience convenience right <laughs> so who who started the argument so, yes i was just about to ask a question who started it i'm going to tell you what i mean i mean not really want to buy nothing <laughs> <laughs> so you know i, I mean come up with an <laughs> that would have never been a, a woman thing right. like you know we always try to find excuse for everything how about you rory i got absolutely nothing what did you give Rose, chocolate, mm-hmm. love. Okay. And, and, yeah. At, yeah. 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 So How about you, Doc? Yeah. Um, for me, well, I had a very busy night the night before. I was at work. Um, but did I you managed... Busy, did you have a busy night that um, Valentine's night as well? <laughs> no, I had to sleep. <laughs> 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 but essentially, no, man. I mean, I, I tried to see how best I could, you know, you know, show my appreciation to my wife. So I got her some roses. <laughs> Got her, uh, you know, a nice dessert and some a massage package and stuff. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. So do you think, I mean, we, when it comes on to Valentine's Day, the women always think about what they should get and they l- expect gifts. Do you, what, what are your phrases? Do you think men should get gifts on Valentine's Day as well? Uh, quite frankly, I mean, I think that the day has been really centered around women. Um, men giving gifts to women. It does come across that way. I don't think that it's, there's anything wrong with men getting gifts from women. Um, but overall, I think that the day is really celebrated or is really to celebrate women. Um, that's just how it feels and how it is right now. But I don't think there's an issue if a man gets a, a present from a woman. If a, man sh- a woman shows appreciation to a man, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, no. All right, let's see, Rory, what's the most expensive gift you've gotten? and given for Valentine's Day. 
<laughs> with Carmen, but um, <laughs> we want to know. We want to we know. It's Valentine's. Day. Yes. That's a, yo. The question is hard. Um, most expensive car, land, no, farm. Man, I think the most expensive <laughs> gift me get. I just had a color on the wear now from last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. For me, yeah. and. <laughs> where is she? Where is she? And uh, Belinda, uh, before you get there, because we've been asking the men, and she's the only female right now, you know, what is the most expensive gift you've gotten your partner? Oh, or the most expensive like, gift you've received? Oh, a car. Oh. And um, for him, I mm -hmm. gave him 8,000 US. Oh, nice. That's what I'm talking about. Energy. Belinda, yes, because I think men should get gifts. <laughs> Miss Single Belinda. <laughs> oh. I mean, you're the youngest one in the room. So what about for you? All right, but tell the truth, the last time I got a Valentine's Day gift, I think it was grade six or five. Mm -hmm. And the dearest thing, it, I, you know, like a picture for me, Mark, I love you, you are my heart. <laughs> I just, to be honest, I don't have a dearest Valentine's Day gift. Well, You've received, what have you given, like, what have you ever bought? Um, for tell you? the truth, I remember, I think it was a basket, you know. Yeah? I think it was a basket. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice, that's nice. That is, it's a thought that counts. Okay. So, so we want to know, you know, believing in love and Valentine's Day and all of that, if you don't have that expression, if you, your partner doesn't wish you happy Valentine's Day or they don't give you a gift, how do you feel about that, Doc? Mm, I mean, I don't really feel any way about it, to be honest. Um... There has to be an understanding between, you know, each other. If you don't celebrate it, you don't celebrate it. There has to be some level of, you know, as I said, just understand what each person is going through. The day might be a difficult day. As I said, we, we both have jobs. We're both doctors. Um, and so for me, I had work the night before. If she was busy or she just wasn't able to get a gift, it's not going to really affect me as maybe it used to be back in the day. But um, I know it just, as I said, really depends on, on an individual level and a relationship level. What about okay. you, Belinda? <coughs> yeah, it depends on the depth of the relationship. It, it means nothing to me. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> if you don't, oh, get, if you don't get happy Valentine's, Valentine's oh, Day. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Not, not a problem, problem to me because um, we, we share gifts on a regular basis anyway. So it's, it's not a problem. If I'm a birthday, no. <laughs> then then not a problem, that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beshe, what about you? If you're in a relationship and you know it is this girl... And share your art, and she not even wish you happy Valentine's yeah, Day. Don't get or you feel about that? You not get nothing. Well, as I said before, the day is not really a big deal for me because, to be honest, true to your love for sure. But even though that day is a little special, yeah, you know, not a big deal to me, to be honest. Mm. Not a big deal. Okay, fair enough. It's not a big deal for me. Like you know, I live with my partner, so. Yeah. I give gifts just yeah. because I receive mm -hmm. gifts just because mm -hmm. I, I mean we both work <laughs> you know we have a family we have kids to take care of and we're on the go so if you tell me and tell me if you don't tell me you don't tell me you know but more well, something later <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, something. yeah, for, yeah. For, for me it's not a big <laughs> deal either not a big deal like for me Valentine's Day is not this big thing that oh it's a deal breaker if nothing doesn't happen yes it's good to show love and but it's all about that that communication that relationship that you have with your partner so if it's something that you are big on and your partner is not big on it's important that you exactly. have that conversation so exactly that no one has these unmet needs these unmet expectations and all of that that's the important part mm -hmm. definitely okay. so good. we are up on another break mm -hmm. we, this is Jassel after dark brought to you by jamaica aid support for life all right, it's 9.32 on The Bridge 99 FM. You're listening to Jassel After Dark. All right, and we're still here with our lovely guests. And the questions continue. So my next question is for Doc. All right, so for some people, Valentine's Day comes with a lot of anxiety, um, trying to get the perfect gift, feeling depressed. You know, if you don't get a gift or if your partner doesn't put you on their social media... So, Doc, what are some ways people can ensure that Valentine's Day is not a day to be filled with anxiety for them? Well, it really goes back to just the understanding between the persons, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if you are in a relationship, then there has to be some sort of understanding as to their expectations for the day. Um, communication is key. Very much so. Communication. Yeah. So, you need to discuss um, up front what you think you would want 
or what you require it can also be a surprise yes but if you want to really get rid of that anxiety it's very important to communicate um between each other and to try and get that um understanding from before so you can kind of get rid of that. I don't know if that really answers the question. So get the understanding before and then you can get rid of that. Yeah, I mean. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's Valentine's Day and it's, it's the week where we celebrate Valentine's Day. And that for a lot of persons means having sex, which we observe this week as Safer Sex Week. So Rory, tell us about Safer Sex Week. What the history about it and what does it really mean? Um, well, you know, we say Valentine's is about sex. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when it comes to Valentine's Day, everybody have all heap of sex, and um, that's how the whole safer sex week comes in because we're trying to protect persons while they enjoy themselves um, sexually. So, um, so that is how safer sex week come about. So it's a week of activities, a week of giving information on how to protect yourself, a week on giving you gears as in condoms, mm-hmm. lubricants, those beautiful things in terms I should say arm yourself up with, to protect yourself so yeah <laughs> so the the data has been showing since the pandemic that we have an increase in HIV transmission uh, among the 16 to 24 age group so what tips would you have for them to mm-hmm. protect themselves yeah, yeah that's 16 to 24 um, so it's a younger age group mm-hmm. the fact that they are young but they're having a lot of sex so they they have sex but they don't have the right information so the tip that I would have is one Find a safe space where you can get the correct information because sometimes when you get the information, you get it from the wrong source. So get the correct information. Um, and I'll, I'll also say have a close relationship with your, I don't want to say parent, mm-hmm. but so adult, guard, adult, adult guardian trust. who you can yeah. trust mm-hmm. because we realize that also a breakdown because this sex is still top. Sex is still taboo among young um, society. So when mm-hmm. young people are having sex, I was having a conversation at work today mm-hmm. about uh, uh, young ladies. That they say, why you create the space for young people? Like, oh, so I say, listen, you're having sex, right? She said, yes. So I said, if you go pharmacy and buy a condom, how you feel like that? She said, she would have never go pharmacy. I said, mm-hmm. right, because people are going to judge you and I'm going to say, oh, look how she young or look how she this or that. So we, we create safe space where young persons can feel accommodated and feel welcome to have these conversations. So when it's a we, sorry, when it's a we, who are you talking? When it's a we, who are you talking? In terms of referring to as we, we adults, we society, people. Okay. All right. Where is she? Um, when you were younger, where did you get information about you know sex? All right. So to be honest. I kind of grew in the street. So I'm the street, I really mean like as a bad kid. Mm-hmm. Because my parents are vending that, like, from, from me I grew. So I kind of in the street more and more. So I get to see adult about it. And you know what? That is an open space. So you have to come across all type of different things. So I really get the information from, like, adult, like, certain big man. You see, because I'm always a big man friend me have in my little. Okay. And for you, Belinda, if you could go back in time and meet your teenage self, what is one message you would tell yourself in relation to safe sex? Don't get breathed for no work list, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't get back up at 16. Don't get breathed for no work get a work list, boy. I'll give it done. Well, you but see, they it, see, you see, mm-hmm. I grew in a time, you know, I was raised in a time, I was raised in a community when they would tell her that Peter Jip fall from sky. Mm. But I wasn't a, I wasn't an idiot. I was I was I was very bright. Mm-hmm. I was attending a very top school at the time. So I knew the do's and the don'ts. But they were peer pressure cuz all of my friends them were they were having sex at the time. Mm-hmm. Christian Pitney them. You understand I wasn't having sex at the time. Well, you know, you follow a friend, I think. But I would tell my young self, don't breed for no work, so I'll get a boy. <laughs> All right. It. You see, that's a good thing you mentioned that because we, we are partnering with the National Family Planning Board for this this episode of Just Laughter Dark. And for our viewers and listeners, they actually have a slogan which encourages young people or young women to, to delay having children. So I, I, the person who can actually send that or put, type it in the comments and let us know, the first person to type it in the comments, let us know what's that NFPB slogan that tells you to, you know, delay se- delay having children and actually Calvin, grow up before you do that. 
Just you win some phone card. Yeah, Rory. Just to add to what we share said, because you hear what I'm saying, say most of the information when you get the front. Get big, big man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, it's a funny thing, I have the wrong information, you get the so that them really True. don't have the right information. True. Yeah. So you get information from a big man, you got to tell us, say, yo, here, I have a red and black. I get get shot last week, but I have two pills left, you can't share it. You know? Yeah. Make you one we left oh, back. Oh, my Lord. Mm. Mm. And you know that don't make no sense. Mm. So you, 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 you so that is why I said before, you have to be careful where you get the information from and who you get the information from. Because where she being young, mm-hmm. he's going to trust the adult, but the adult mm-hmm. not really have the right information. Doc, I, I heard you, you, you chime in when you talked about the sharing the medication. You, uh, for, yeah. uh, <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> you should not share medication, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Please, right. if you are having symptoms of something, whether it is a sexual infection or anything else, um, I don't recommend that you go to um, somebody who is not medically trained mm. and take medication from them. Whether it is for high blood pressure, whether it is for an infection, mm. whether it is for anything else, do not share medication, please. Yes. <laughs> All right. I just so, want to make that clear so we can. <laughs> we just, want to, re- we just want to remind. Just mm-hmm. want to remind our viewers and listeners that Jamaica Aid Support for Life, we provide free HIV and syphilis testing at our three locations in Kingston, in St. Anne's Bay, and in Montego Bay. And the National Family Planning Board also provides free HIV testing at the 5 Sylvan Avenue location. All okay. right. Um, Rory, my question is for you. At what age do you think young people are adequately prepared to engage in sexual relationships? Or in relationships. In relationship. Oh. Yeah. Me, sexual relationship or relationship. All right, in relationships. Relationship. Let, let's keep it at relationships. Yeah. Um I like you make the you make the mistake or whatever I call it. Because <laughs> guess what? <laughs> young people believe that if they're in a relationship, they must have sex. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to take out of them. You can actually be in a relationship mm-hmm. without having sex. Right. Right? You can be sexy but not having sex, right? Mm-hmm. Um but what age for relationship? No, um, with the right guidance and information, I'm going to say 13, um, dating, date, you can date, 13. yes, date, have, dating, oh, well, I know, well, I know. Mm-hmm. dating, yeah. dating, okay. not relationship, but in terms of Funny. No, but that's well, the relationships. Don't give me the I, dating. I want the relationship. Re, uh, relationship. Take me to the relationship. Relationship. Yes, I, I don't want to go to the process. 16. 16. 16. Yeah, so we 16. put it at age of consent. Yeah, 16. 16. 16. For relationship. For relationship, 16. Okay, for me it's 21. <laughs> but yeah. When you... Okay, let's let's move on. <laughs> Where is 21. No, sir. 13. <laughs> no, as I said... They, no, all right. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but clarify. Dating, let yeah. me clarify. Because mm-hmm. yes, I don't want to have it the wrong way. Right? What I get to understand um, is the taboo around relationship and dating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And young persons have this fear where they think that even if they see a boy or a girl that you know, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. it's the ultimate sin. So they will not say these things, right? So from my understand, from my perspective, it's okay. Because I have a niece. My niece is 13. And I ask her a question like, you see a boy you like? And she look for me like she not expect me to ask her that. And I say, she said, yes. <laughs> Awkward. So I said, no, you can't tell me. Like, you know. And she said, oh, yeah. I said, okay, it's fine if you like a boy. It's natural, but that not mean say. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So uh, um, what I want for us to get rid of the, the, the whole taboo thing over it. I yeah. understand what you're saying, but I wouldn't, mm-hmm. I wouldn't endorse it. No. I wouldn't yeah, endorse right. it because... Um, at age 13 and date, put it this way. Date, yeah. At age 18 and dating, they're not so right up in them head the same way. They can't angle the books with it the same because way. So we are talking about 13. Dating. Well, I know we are talking about, we are talking about these nowadays mm. kids. We are talking about the 13. Gen Z and the Gen yeah, X. Yeah, the, the 13 year old and dating, <laughs> mm-hmm. it are going to mess with the books, trust me. Okay. So I wouldn't endorse that at all. All right, you see, this whole dating thing can get out of the bar for because it can, you know, it the, can, the, the it perceptions can. about what dating is in the first place can oh, differ so much. Yeah. But Wei Shi, mm-hmm. um, how comfortable are you to talk about sex with your peers, your age group, and what are those conversations like? All right, me, me two hundred percent comfortable because you know, say, I'm a younger age group that certain thing we can say. Like, for instance, I'm gonna talk to an adult. 
you know, we can't really use expletive to that. But like when we younger peers now, we can literally talk the raw convo <laughs> and everything. And so then what, what you tell them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans and we are talk, we don't really go like <laughs> in depth with, with every detail. You understand? We just mention certain things, like, you know, certain position if you manage and, you know? Them like a thing. We don't really go in depth with, you know? All type okay. of certain things. So, you're comfortable talking about the sex. So, you see, Young people are comfortable talking about the sex, but in terms of the protection part, are you comfortable going into a store and buying condoms? All right. At this age now, at 18 now, yeah, I'm me, me, me very comfortable now. Cause as I said, I get bigger now, so it not really no matter. But like when I was 16, 17, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. but now I have identification, can show so yo, I'm legal in my country, I'm a big man now. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> It might be kind of different for the females even when they reach 18 because there's this thing with female buying condoms. She's a, the B yeah. word. But with the guys buying condom at 18, the you look man. younger than 18. My man, yeah, road boy, yeah, go on. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's one thing we need to tackle there's because women need to know Similar that to sexual health is, is your responsibility as well. It you is. can't leave it to the man to walk with boots. Right? You have to... Protect yourself as well. It's your responsibility. I remember just that as a much school as girl was telling me that she was she confided in me and she was saying that um, she she had she and her boyfriend went on a date, and uh, she's eighteen, and she she had her condom and everything, and the boy says she. <laughs> <laughs> the boy said she had the B word because <laughs> she was prepared. Oh, so I must no. say, you, 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 mm. you know, you're an expert, and him, and him just him did turn off, That's and him just ended the relationship. So. Yeah, yeah, you I, see, I, that, that's a concept, uh, a misconception a lot of men. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's something, as I said, we need to tear that down because it's the woman's responsibility to protect herself as well, just as much as, as it's just the, as the male wants to protect mm-hmm. themselves. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I agree. you better yeah. protect yourself, women. All right. But, Rory, with your work at the, the Teen Hub, well, we, we'll come to that question shortly because we right are up break. on another <laughs> break right now. So it's Jassel After Dark on the Bridge 99 FM. Right. Welcome back to Jassel After Dark, brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. And we're partnering with the National <coughs> Family Planning Board this week for Safer Sex Week. Dr. Coombs, as we talk about Safer Sex, yes, a lot of wine and liquor drinking <laughs> occurs during the Valentine's period. So I want to know, is there a connection between risky sexual behavior and alcohol? Definitely. Mm. Most certainly. Tell us uh, how. how? Well, mm-hmm. there are different levels of um, intoxication that occurs when alcohol is, is consumed. Um, based on the level of alcohol in your bloodstream, it can cause you to have an altered mental status. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you change the way you think. Things are um, perceived differently. Um, pain is also lessened. If you are, it's, all, it's like an anesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you don't make correct judgment all the time. So your judgment is impaired if you have alcohol, if you're intoxicated. And therefore, um, when it comes down to sex and sexual intercourse, it becomes um, different in terms of your agreement to it and also your level of satisfaction um, as well as, yeah, overall it changes when you're intoxicated or when alcohol is consumed with sex so it's, it's something that should be monitored that you should take with consideration if you are going to um engage in sexual um mm-hmm. you so, know, so don't just pleasures. think about for billa vibe or all vibes you know for no not necessarily mm-hmm. how i mean i'm not saying that you should not drink if you're gonna right. have sex because it does sometimes enhance the mm-hmm. sexual pleasures however you have to be mindful of the amount of alcohol that you take in because mm. it can also have legal implications as well yes. as we can get into. But <laughs> we, we don't have to. Yeah. We don't have to. <laughs> so, yes, it does play an important role when it comes down to sexual intercourse, even around Valentine's time because, as you said, mm-hmm. around Valentine's time, people drink alcohol and so on. So, right. yes. Okay. So, All I can't right. even add to that, Calvin, mm-hmm. not only legal aspect, but in terms of protection. You can't have the condom on because that's so drunk you don't even remember. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. You know, so you know, protect yourself. And that's why I be a drunken baby by the November. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. So, my next question is for Rory. Yeah. Do you think social media impacts the decisions of young people, their self-esteem, how they form relationships, and the decisions they make about sex? And generally how they access SRH information? Of course. Most for, for, for our viewers and listeners, SRH means sexual, sexual and reproductive, reproductive health. health. Yeah. Right. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, social media 
is the thing now that right. everybody get them probably values now and uh, not even from the family but you know mm -hmm. um so so for a young lady you know social media how she, a girl look this sort so she want to look mm -hmm. how she see the relationship so she want for a relation Couple even though sometimes sometimes you know say a fakeness and a mm -hmm. facade it but, is you know it, it pushes us it influences us a lot so um most definitely social media impacts how we view ourselves or young people view themselves and how they view each other uh, is that a good thing maybe maybe not depends on how you perceive it it can be good mm -hmm. um, but for the most part i think it affects young person's self-esteem because you feel like you should look a certain mm -hmm. way you should act a certain way you should do uh, certain things to be accepted or to feel like wanted or you know be a part of in terms of srh um in terms of young people accessing information um, via social media as it relates to sexual reproductive health it's not where it should be but i think it's getting so it's getting there so it's, especially it's when a person there. like dr coombs eh, mm. turn social media influencer you know you can't get in yes. correct information yes. right. information right. in a in a very youthful <laughs> I know Jim Diana Jim Diana you know, <laughs> but you can get youthful youthful information in a very because a lot of us never see doctors like how we see Dr. Coombs mm -hmm. like we think doctors boring and, and we're probably not a whole we don't want information but when you have social media you can get this information in a you connect it it works yeah, right. so social I'm not media you know. yeah, <laughs> not boring social media um alters a lot of our perception when it comes on to dating right. relationships sex, everything and, mm -hmm. and valentine's mm -hmm. day also so for belinda i'm sure your relationship would not have been um really um social media is not where you would have gotten the idea from so we want to know is valentine's day fun for persons who've been lo together long for married people for big people is, is it still it depends on the person you're with mm -hmm. some days some people and it just becomes so monotonous and empty um but um for valentine days with people who are together for a while it can be uh, mysterious mm -hmm. um it can be complicated mm -hmm. and um it can be excited it can it, especially when you have two freaky people link up <laughs> you know i know a couple they're very what? freaky and they've been together for very 18 open, open minded. Very open yes. minded. <laughs> can i say freaky on the open air <laughs> very open minded <laughs> Shade, <laughs> you open minded. I know, you're, I know. You're open minded. No, that's fine. You're talking about this. <laughs> so, um, for, it depends on the, the person that you're with. Okay. All right, Rory, let me ask you a question. How can condom use be a sexy topic and how can condom be consistent in relationships? Lord, it's hard. Um, mm -hmm. Condom use, how can it be a sexy topic? <clears throat> Valentine's Day, you know, you can't make the condom sexy. You know, uh, make, when we make sex, you can't use different ways of putting it. Me on. Just say no, me just look we were just know? looking, we're engaging. You know? me me just engaging. Look fine, yeah. So, usually, people say condom boring, and you know, want to use it, and it brought vibes. Mm -hmm. You know, the female can use her mouth to put it on. Mm -hmm. That's sexy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, play some music, and you know, you have flavored condoms, yeah. and flavored, them thing there. The glow in the dark. Yeah. You have strawberry, and them look thing mm -hmm. there. So, of course, condom can be sexy, depends on how. You want to use it. It definitely can be a sexy topic. Uh, listen to me. Anything with sex can be sexy and fun because it's uh, your mind. As well, it's your mind. It. So if you want to really use it, you can you can find creative ways. Use condom with fruits and all them something. <laughs> <laughs> no, creative like ways. Yeah, we hear some advice from Rory. Queen. So, Dr. Okay. Kuhn, a question for you. Yeah, so there is a belief that a lot of sex occurs on Valentine's Day outside of the feel-good factor of sex. What are some benefits of having sex? And why would you encourage people to have sex on Valentine's Day? Well, sex is healthy. Yes, um, se is. Sex is, is healthy for you. Um, it produces different hormones, endorphins mm -hmm. in the body that actually helps to reduce stress. Release. And if your body is... Let me take my notes. Yeah, man. Release if, stress. if your body mm -hmm. is stressed out, you actually produce a hormone called cortisol that's actually naturally produced in the adrenal glands and what that does is that it can increase your blood pressure and mm -hmm. your blood pressure i did a talk today on blood pressure on your heart mm -hmm. blood pressure can har can harm your heart significantly mm -hmm. and you don't want high blood pressure so sex actually reduces that mm -hmm. and it's, it's pretty good it also develops your um, emotional um, development with your um, partner as mm -hmm. well that connection strengthens during sex that's important as well 
So, yeah, there, there are many different benefits. Uh, but those are just two that I want to just point out straight away. Yeah, okay. and, and they make you sleep like a baby. Yeah, man. Benefits <laughs> when it, the time is right and you're responsible enough because, you know, you know, I go here, say, you yeah, got sex is make you what the, what the emotional thing uh, young people want to hear them something oh the doctor man did say it <laughs> make me it make me stress free so it comes with responsibility yeah. It's in, yeah, yeah. in context yeah. 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 In and context. i want to add as well as doc says um sex is healthy um solar pleasure is also available you know you can definitely release just the same with solo pleasure so again the pressure of valentine's day being trapped and and having sex so when it's so, a solo pleasure as in so, masturbate as in masturbate so, right as in masturbate i have to be mindful as in <laughs> masturbate so so that is right of course but let's not forget if you're single don't feel pressure to feel like you have to have a partner for yeah. valentine's day mm-hmm. and you have to do this for valentine's day pressure yourself and the anxiety and the stress and all of that come out hello Go and, and masturbate. And, and, and the topic, you know, <laughs> Valentine <laughs> trap. It can be a trap, you know. It can be a trap. <laughs> so I wanted to pa, just point that out. Oh, holy poly hustlers out there, you know. <laughs> when it's when it a lead up to Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. and that, all the men will never like them, but them never like, they will like the man. <laughs> Let me, me tell you something. Tree, no? I know, no, <laughs> I never got you them something. No, I never got you them something. Let me tell you, see, have a holy pa girl out there, them line up the man who them know them are going to eat out. Yeah. In every way. Eat, but I mean, oh, no. I mean, like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, listen. This is, this is eat on them pockets. This is another them pocket. Pocket. <laughs> Eat on them another pockets. Another night. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, so, Weishi, final thing I want to hear from you. So, for the young people listening, right, how important it is for them to be practicing safe sex? All right. To be honest, it's very, very important. Due to the fact that um, I'm mostly the younger age group, I can't check, um, different type of STI, STD, all of them things there. So in my honest opinion, I feel it's very, 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 very important to practice the safe sex thing. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well said. And Doc, what about you? Well, Final well, words? Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I'd like to say <laughs> that on that topic, you know, I want to strongly endorse um, healthy sexual relations. Um, safe sex is always important especially when it comes down to STIs, STDs, prevention, all right? The use of a condom and the proper use of a condom, I should say, yes. is important. Um, one condom should be used at a time. I know there are persons who are you know, afraid and try to put on two condoms because they are hesitant and so on, but that is actually not good to use more than one at a time. Putting it on properly is also important, um, and it's just not just to prevent pregnancy but stis all right, all right? Uh, so i want to say that right. loud and clear for all the listeners safe sex is the way to go all right and rory um any advice for young people and where can they find nfb nfpb yes nfpb the national family planning board yes. nfpb can be owned at Five Sylvan Avenue, Kingston Five Crossroad, right where the big tasty there. You can't see it, you can't miss it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a safe space for young persons. You you can go there and get your information, family planning, HIV, family planning counseling, HIV testing, syphilis testing, you can get condoms, you can lubricants, all those beautiful things. And I just to add to what Dr. Coombs and Wayne Shea say, yes, protect yourself, young mm-hmm. people, use a condom. And when we say use a condom, we mean latex condom. No bread bag, no scandal plum bag, bag, no plum bag. <laughs> <laughs> them so, they don't work. Uh, um, Plastic right. bag. <laughs> and finally, young people, get your information from the right source. Yeah. Cause you don't That's want to get right. um, certain misconception. Okay. Well, in the final words. Linda, final words. Okay. Um, whether Valentine's Day is a trap or not, it's mm-hmm. better to be safe than sorry. And you're not only preventing yourself from diseases, you're, you're preventing yourself from early pregnancy, yeah. which can lead to, um, Dr. El, you know, yes, something yes. at the womb. No, oh, man, yes, sir, cancer, sorry. cervical oh, cancer, yes, yes, early, and early. all those mm-hmm. things. I had a child at a very tender age of 16, and every day I must worry if, if me go, that going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. And girls, you have to be careful. Choose your partner wisely. If you want to choose a partner, stick with one, because the different size penis is them can cause... Tell me, no doctor. <laughs> it can cause womb cancer. You're, you're, you're going well. You're going well. <laughs> no, because you see, remember, um, as I said before, when a child gets pregnant, it has nothing to do sometimes with um, 
not, not being knowledgeable of mm-hmm. what she's supposed to do or not the do's and don'ts sometimes them body tingle my body mm-hmm. just tingle mm-hmm. for one minute less than a minute <laughs> you understand and, said, and, and, and I got less, pregnant because I, I was I was I was a minute. part of the, 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 the Belinda the, I just said less than a minute we, we have, have less than a minute, minute. we have less and than a minute have you, to wrap you, you up. got so, it there so we want to thank our listeners for joining us for Just Laughter Dark this is season 9 and this is episode 1 tonight we discuss love stories Valentine's Day is it a trap no just Laughter Dark brought to you by Jamaica Aid Support for Life. We provide free HIV and syphilis testing, free HIV treatment, and free HIV related legal services. You can give us a call, 925-0021, or follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you for joining us. What we can't say in the day, we'll discuss after, after dark. dark.